Hey guys, uh, back with another video on this whole storytelling thing. This one is going to be uh, less about structure, but still a very important part of telling any story um, about characters. And that is the idea of uh, character race in, um, in media. And ra not just race, but race, gender, and sexual orientation in media, um, especially in adaptation. And so why is this so important? Why is this a big issue? I really wish it weren't, but it is a big issue because every time we hear about characters um, who are being adapted into different medium as different races, it becomes a big hullabaloo. We got this earlier this year, I believe, with um, the Harry Potter play and Hermione being cast as a black woman. Um, we get this every time a new superhero is cast, um, so with like Spider-Man and uh, D Danny Glover. Uh, that's a big thing, and then you have a whole big counter-argument of, no, he can't be black, Peter Parker's not black, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then very recently with the uh, new Ghostbusters trailer, people are saying, oh, this is what feminism does to Ghostbusters, makes it really bad and all that. Um, and so a lot of people are asking whenever things get adapted and races get changed or genders get changed or whatever, uh, why do they have to be different? Why do they have to be more diverse? And I think the question we should be asking is, why can't they be more diverse? Why can't a character be black or Latino or Asian or female or queer? Um, what's holding them back? And of course, the answer to that is nothing. There's no reason that any character can't be adapted into any race or any gender whatsoever, as long as they have the same personality. As J.K. Rowling put it on Twitter after the uh, announcement of the Black Hermione, um, that all that's canon to the Hermione character is uh, frizzy hair, brown eyes, and very clever. And of course, being black doesn't make any of that less true. Of course, what J.K. Rowling said and what J.K. Rowling's belief here isn't the end-all be-all. Uh, there's more that can be done to, to remedy this problem. Um, and the answer to that is we have to create more explicitly diverse characters. Um, we have to create ca uh, new characters and say, this character is black, this character is gay, this character is a female, um, or is a woman. Because uh, right now, when we think of a character, when we think of a default character, the default hero in a story, the default protagonist, we tend to think of that character as a straight white male. And by we, I mean Americans and I'm guessing most of Europe. Um, so, most of Western Europe. The Western world. I'll say, tends to think of just the default human being as a straight white male. And so when we create a protagonist who we want people to relate to in a way, we think, well, if we add race, if we add that they're, uh, that they're a woman, if we add that they're queer, that takes them further and further away from this default idea of the straight white man. Um, and that's why so many movie protagonists are straight white male. That's why so many protagonists in general are straight white male because I think subconsciously in a way in the western world we think of the straight white male as just the default human being the human being that anybody can place themselves into the shoes of and we think that by making a character a person of color by making that a woman by making them queer uh, or transgender or something then we're making them a lot less relatable and of course of course that's not true there is no default human being. Race and gender and sexual orientation are not are, are not recolors or deviations of some platonic ideal of human being. That all people are created equal and all people are equal in their peopleiness, um, and that as people we all share uh, the same capacities for happiness and sadness and anger and a struggle and um, and all of that, that's all just human. That is not augmented by having a person of color, by having a character um, of queerness or anything. All that remains. People are people no matter what they are. They are people. And so in order to remedy this idea of the straight white male as default, as the straight white male as normal, I think we need more new characters who are explicitly uh, people of color, or women, or trans, or gay, or whatever, um, and equally presented as normal, as people, as valid 
in their life. Um, and then when it comes to adaptation, uh, there's this big argument, of course, that race doesn't matter, that Batman can be white, black, whatever. You know, as long as he's a guy in a bat costume beating up criminals, it doesn't matter what Batman is. And I think that's, that's great. That's a step forward. Uh, but I think it's still not everything we need, because I think we have to accept and we have to start shouting from the rooftops that um, instead of just not having an effect on a character, that making characters and adaptations more diverse can improve a story. That diversity improves the stories that are more diverse. And as an example, I want to go back to Spider-Man and look at kind of the essential ethos of Spider-Man, which is a teenager, a character who's poor, who doesn't have a lot of social power, he's a nerd, he's bullied, um, and then once he becomes Spider-Man, once he starts standing up for the things he believes in, is vilified by the press, is called a menace, um, is called a villain. And Peter Parker, as this character, as a straight white male, uh, he works as that character, that works for him, as a story about a, a poor teenager who's struggling with ideas of power. But how much more poignant does that story become if you make Peter Parker black? If you make Peter Parker a, a person of color who, in today's world, has more of these issues, is more likely to be poor, is more likely to have no social capital. The idea of bullying today is way different than it was in the 60s when Spider-Man was created. We do not, you know, thank God, in America, we do not have that same culture of bullying. So instead, his lack of social power could be, could be because of his race, because he's black, because he's a disenfranchised individual. And then vilified in the media, oh my god, have you seen the reaction of the Black Lives Matter movement? These are people fighting again for power, for change, who in parts of the press and parts of the media are called menaces, are called villains, rioters, anarchists even. And so how much more poignant does that story become, that simple Spider-Man origin story, how much better is it if you turn Peter Parker into a person of color, into someone who actually has to deal with that day to day? And going to superheroes, the same thing can be said of the X-Men. Um, the X-Men have, basically since their creation, have been analogs for disenfranchised people, for queer people, I think, uh, more specifically. But a lot of the X-Men aren't actually queer. A lot of the X-Men are still straight white people. They, you know, there's a, I'd, I'd say there's a lot of gender diversity there, but most of them are still straight and white. What if the X-Men, along with being vilified because they're mutants, were vilified because they're black or because they're homosexual? And how, how much better would that be for a gay reader actually reading those characters and thinking, wow, you know, not only are they superhero, they're, they're also gay, like, like I am. Um, and how much, I, I think that just makes a better story and a story that's more, um, more relevant. And if you need any more proof that diversifying characters can make them more relevant and make those stories better, Look at Hamilton. Look at what Lin-Manuel Miranda did to the story of Alexander Hamilton, this guy who really has been unappreciated in American history for 200 years or something. Look at what Manuel Miranda did uh, for his character just by updating him, by making him a person of color, making him a person that today is more reflective of that immigrant experience that Alexander Hamilton faced as a white man in the 1700s. Because... You know, as a, as a white immigrant in America, it's a lot easier to get ahead than, than as a black immigrant who has to face, or an immigrant of color, because Lin Manuel Miranda, I think, is, is Hispanic. Um, but, but, but look how much better that story is. Look how much more relevant and how, how, how much more poignant that story became when he turned Alexander Hamilton into a person of color, into someone who looks like the person today who would be struggling with power, with, um, with dissent in government, with, um, with people not liking what he stands for because of where he's from. In the play, he's introduced as, um, as a, how does a, uh, how does a bastard orphan son of a whore? You know, that's, today, that, that's not so much, we don't think of a white person when we think of a fatherless immigrant. We just don't. And you can say that in itself uh, indicates some racial prejudice, but I mean, I, I think Hamilton is all the proof we need to say that diversity can improve a story that has been previously told with white characters. 
Um, and so again, you know, the the question you're at you should ask yourself is is not what excuse do I have to make this character more diverse, but what are my excuses for keeping this character a straight white male? Um, and so I, I wrote up a bit. Uh, when should a character be a straight white male? Because of course I'm not advocating that nobody write straight white male characters. There are still tons of straight white male people, um, or straight-ish white male people, in my case. Um, and, you know, I still like seeing those characters. And yes, we have tons of those characters already, but, you know, if you want to write a straight white male character and you're thinking this character has to be straight white and male, well, what can you do? How can you justify that? And so here, I think, is an example of a character who really only makes sense as a straight white male, and that character is, of course, Ian Fleming's James Bond. Um, because if you read the books, if you read how Ian Fleming wrote James Bond, I think he has lots of cultural markers that could only come from being a straight white male. He's a racist, he's a sexist, he's a homophobe. If you look at how he deals with people who are not straight white men, he is always very dismissive of them. He is... British in in Brit in a in a mid nineteenth century mid twentieth century sorry Britain um, he's an imperialist he's very imperialistic whenever he goes to a foreign country he's like oh my gosh this would be so much better if Britain were in charge um, he comes from a moneyed family he's uh, he's grown up he grew up wealthy he went to boarding schools and traveled all over Europe as a kid um, and he's a high ranking government official he's someone with lots of power and lots of privilege. Um, and all this is really reflexive of kind of straight white men in England in that time. Like, it wouldn't really make sense for James Bond to be a person of color in 1960s, 1970s England um, in his job. I mean, I'm sure there were people in the government of color in that time, but with, you know, would they be a self-loathing racist? You know, would, would, would they be so heavily favoring imperialism i think it just you know that isn't to say of course that james bond couldn't be black uh couldn't be a woman especially especially so in the movie adaptations because the movie adaptations just by their nature are a lot more modern are a lot more um reflective of today's world and i think there's no reason why in today's world in 2016 james bond couldn't be black james bond couldn't be gay um, because he's already a lot less racist in these movies. He's already, um, just kind of softer overall in these movies. He's a lot more likable, um, because they take place, uh, reflective of current, um, of current gender and race and sexual orientation acceptability. And so in today's world, there's no reason that James Bond couldn't be black. So if you're adapting James Bond, if you're adapting any character from... 50 years ago or 100 years ago, see if they make sense, you know, in their stories, if you're updating that story, would they make sense as a person of color, as a woman, as a queer person? Um, and then think to yourself, do I have any excuse not to do this? Um, and just because I feel that this is a popular excuse that people use to not write more diverse characters, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm a writer, or I'm a storyteller, and I'm a straight white male, then I can't write a person of color because that's not who I am. I don't know what their stories are. And if that's your excuse, I'm going to tell you right now, that is fucking bullshit. Do you want to know why? And if I have to go back to this page again, I will. Because we're all people. Because being a straight white male does not mean that you cannot empathize. You cannot sympathize with people of color with women and with uh, with people of different sexual orientation than you. If you're having trouble putting yourself in those shoes, then you, if you're watching this video, you probably have the internet. You probably have all the resources you need to talk to people who are different than you and get their experiences and round out your own characters by getting true experience of these people. But again, at the base, you can turn any character black for whatever reason you want to. A black character does not have to be this, 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 and this. A black character is just a character who is black. A female character is just a character who identifies as female. You don't need anything else. You don't have to make them underprivileged if they're a person of color. You don't have to make them super feminine if they are a woman character. 
you just have to make them good characters. Um, so that that's that. If you're writing a story, if you're writing characters, again, thesis of this whole video, the only question you should be asking yourself is, why can't I make this character more diverse? Um, and if you have reasons, again, like James Bond, where it wouldn't make sense, then yeah, go ahead, write a straight male character. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're only writing straight male characters, then there might be something wrong with that. And you might have to question yourself and think, what can I be doing to solve this problem of, of, um, of representation in media? Um, and so yeah, the responsibility is ours to, to do this. Um, so yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this got you thinking. Again, I hope if you are uh, creative, if you are creating something, then you are now asking yourself, how can I make my story my more diverse? Um, and uh, yeah, if you like this video, please rate it. If you want more of this stuff, more of this me ranting at a webcam, then please subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you have any response to this video whatsoever, if you want to talk about it, or if you have any uh, recommendations or things that you want me to cover or talk about on my channel, please leave them in the just in the uh, in the comments, and I will uh, try and address those in future videos or in the comment section. Um, again, this is an issue that is quite important to me that I'm very passionate about. I think uh, obviously because um, I managed to rant for 15 minutes about it. Um, so yeah, um, again, thank you for watching, um, and I'll be making more of these sorts of videos again uh, because it's been a month and I feel that, you know, why not? Again, what excuse do I have not to? So yes, again, third time, fourth time, whatever. Thank you for watching and I hope that, you, uh, that you'll that you join me for some more discussions of media or just reviews or whatever I do on this channel. So see ya.